Hey guys, thanks for joining me back here at the Flying S Models channel. So in my last video, I mentioned that I'd be working with both Icelandic fine art and resin to detail to offer the 148th Fairy Gannet AEW3 through the resin to detail line. I've been working modifications to the master patterns to include options for both folded wings and dropped flaps. The original kit had fixed wings and raised flaps, so there's a lot of ongoing effort to get these upgrades, along with others to include new wheels, landing gear, and cockpit complete. To help speed up the process, I recently purchased a frozen Sonic Mini 3D printer. I thought I'd make a quick video showing some of the features and capabilities of this great little machine. Now I picked mine up on Amazon for about $249, which is pretty hard to believe given everything this little baby can do. I also snagged an AnyCubic wash and cure machine, but that hasn't arrived just yet. I've included links to the printer and the wash and cure, along with the liquid resin I'm using for this demo in the video description below. Make sure to check those out if you're in the market for a nice little desktop 3D printer. So I decided not to bore you with the unpacking and basic assembly of the printer. Other than the build head that has to be screwed on though, it comes pretty much as you see it here. I have already performed the initial Z direction or vertical calibration and I've installed the resin vat and filled it with a little resin. As you can see, there's resin on the top of the build platform, so you can tell I've already used it once. I just couldn't resist checking it out the moment I got it. The printer has a simple user interface that allows you to scroll through the STL files that you'll load on the flash drive. For this little demo, I'm not going to print any of the Gannett parts, although here's a look at the new wheels and landing gear models. We are still working out a few kinks in those models, so for this video, I'll print the crankcase from Resin to Detail's excellent little 132nd Pratt & Whitney R2800 engine. You can check that out if you're interested in picking one up over at resintodetail.com. I've included a link in the video description as well. To get it ready to print, you just import the model into the included Cheetubox software. It's pretty straightforward using the menus at the top. Once you've got it imported, you can manipulate it, duplicate it, and move it around on the build plate. The first time you print on the Sonic Mini, you'll also need to make sure that you select that particular printer in the Cheetubox software. You can also customize your settings for a particular resin that you're using, or change the print resolution as well. When you're happy with the model on the build plate, you'll need to slice it using the slice feature in the software. Once that's done, you can simply save it to the flash drive and exit out. I'll add a little extra resin to the vat as it got a little bit low based on my first use. Once you plug the flash drive into the USB port, it's a simple matter of just selecting the print job you want and hitting the go button. The LCD screen shows you the number of layers for the job as well as the estimated build time. The machine will crank away, doing its thing, building one layer at a time until the model is complete. When the part is done printing, you can either remove the build head and scrape the part off, or just scrape it off with the build head still attached. I'm going to go ahead and remove the build head to scrape off the crankcase part. I need to clean the build head anyway so that the next time I print, it will actually stick to the build plate. Be sure to remember to always clean the build plate with alcohol so that the next print job will actually stick to it. Now the part is obviously wet and has a coating of liquid resin. So make sure to wear some gloves and use a paper towel to allow the excess resin to drip away. At this point, the part is a little bit soft and needs to be washed and cured. Like I mentioned, I don't have my wash and cure station yet, so I'll just dip it in alcohol to rinse it and put it outside in the sun to cure with UV. After it's cured, you can remove all of the build supports. Here's the crankcase after it's been dipped in alcohol for a couple of minutes. Curing it under the UV lights would harden the resin further, but for the purposes of this video, 
I'll just show you what it looks like after the alcohol bath. As you can see, the detail is amazing. There's really no need for post-processing. Just a coat of primer and we'll be good to go. Just for fun, I'll add one of the cylinder heads that has been previously printed so you can see how the engine builds up. I'll be doing a full build review of Resin to Detail's R2800 engine in the near future, so make sure to check that out when I have it loaded up here on the Flying S Models channel. Now, I don't really possess any 3D design skills. I wish I did, but I like to spend my time building. But as I work with Icelandic Fine Art and Resin to Detail, having this 3D printer capability will rapidly increase the time that we can bring the Gannet upgrades and the full kits to market. It will, of course, also make it easier to produce more quickly all of the planned offerings in the future. These include a 132nd Gannet, a 132nd Commonwealth CA-15, and many more. If you haven't already subscribed to the channel, I hope you'll consider doing so, and make sure to turn on notifications so you'll know when I post new content. Hope you enjoy checking out this Frozen Mini. We'll see you next time.